Hi guys, this is Erin Cottrell, and I was super happy to join the big break this week and specifically to be able to look over the uh, top 10 auditions that I was given. Uh, and here we go. Here are some insights that I had. Hopefully these things will help and also inspire you to continue on your journey because there was some really, really fantastic work that I saw. Okay, so first of all, this is for Jillian Fortin. Uh, yours was the first one, and I believe it's your Silence of the Lambs monologue. I ran downstairs, outside, burning. I was so scared to wake up, but I had to. That had tremendous connection, and I could definitely tell that you had the visuals and you were connecting with the emotion of the scene. I wished so much that I could hear you better. I appreciate trying to be subtle and small inside of that, but the way that it was delivered with so much whispering and breathiness, I lost like 50% of what was being said and I could feel your connection. And um, unfortunately, so much of that was lost because I couldn't actually hear the words. I think if had you done it just like a tiny bit louder, we would have been able to connect with you a lot more. So that's just really a technical thing. Um, and something kind of for everybody to remember that inside this digital age, we have to be conscious of how tight the camera is and what the audio is. It's just part of it. If you were filming that uh, in an actual movie, they would have had the audio cranked up, it would have been tighter, it would have been a totally different thing. Um, but tr tremendous work and, and you know, I look forward to seeing more things that you do because clearly you have a fantastic facility. So, um, good job. Next we have Paul Santoli. You're also one of the only people I've ever seen like spending more time on the roof of their house than actually inside it. And, uh, and, and what are you doing? You're reading, you know, books, not this, us Weekly or Teen Crap, but, but substantial books. Uh, this was great. I thought, I thought you did a really good job. This was like a pretty low key monologue, but it was a really smart choice because I felt like it was extremely believable. This is something you would be cast in. Um, I felt like your connection was great. I felt like you had a really specific person in mind that you were talking to and uh, you made it your own, which is so important because uh, as I said in the interview I did with Andy, so much specifically of television or film, anything that's that's being played kind of in a modern age that's not character specific or a different time period is about you bringing your personality into this. And I could feel in your speech patterns you were bringing yourself. And the more you bring yourself into it, the more fascinating it is because we want to see, you know, something honest and truthful about who you are and what you're um, conveying to us. So I think you did a really good job with that. Next is Warren Cockrell, who I have to be honest, I was like this close to choosing Warren as my pick. I like to speak English. It is a very simple and ugly. So, do you wonder my outcome today? You do not wonder this? First of all, I assumed you were maybe French in the beginning, which was fantastic. I had to go back into Instagram and hear your slate and hear your American accent and realize that this was something you were creating. And uh, kudos to that. I think it's a tricky accent to do. Um, I've had a, a lot of accent work in my time and I know how, how hard that can be. So really, really well done. Also, the framing that you used was tighter and that was really smart. When you're doing an audition and they want like a three quarter, you know, body shot, I get that. But for performance, when it's tighter and we can really see your eyes and what's going on, that's what tends to work better. And you did a really good job of that. You did a fantastic job of having your moments. Like I could hear and feel the thought process and connect with your eyes of what was going on as you were making these choices and talking. I thought it was really, really well done. Um, I'm very impressed and I, I really wanna see what you continue to do because I feel like you've got 
some big things coming. My next auditioner was actually my pick. And this was Denise McGee, who um, did a brilliant, brilliant performance from Precious. And that's why I hated her, because my man, who was supposed to be loving me, who was supposed to be making love to me, was fucking my baby. And she made him leave. She made him go away. It's this bitch's fault. Because she didn't let my man have her and she didn't say nothing. She didn't scream. She didn't do nothing. So those things that she told you I did to her, who, who else was going to love me? Hmm? Since you got your degree and you know every fucking thing, who was going to love me? Who, who, who was going to make me feel good? Who was gonna touch me and make me feel good late at night? And she made him go away. So when you sit there and you write them fucking notes on your pad about who you think I am and why I did it and all of that, because I didn't have no uh, Denise, I've spoken with you at the live show, but I think what really stood out for me was your capacity to connect so immediately and so deeply to the situation and the character and to just completely let yourself go there. It was a com such a heart-wrenching performance. I watched it several times and at the end, every time, I just had this guttural like, ugh, that came out of me at the end. It was very, very honest and I have a tremendous amount of respect for that. Also, you did a fantastic job with keeping the shot really tight. That makes a massive difference. When we can really see your eyes and see what's going on, it makes a big difference. Really well done. The only thing I would ask, as far as these audition monologues go, is that we have more range. What you did was, was brilliant. You're like an opera singer hitting this perfect note to a T. Now I want to hear how else you can sing. All, you know, your entire reign. When you continue to audition, give us some something new. Give us something that we can, you know, really dig into that's got either some comedy or some lightness to it because I'm really excited to see what you can bring. Top, top marks. Lori Kirk, next, her audition from Bull Durham. I believe in the church of baseball. I've tried all the major religions and most of the minor ones. I worship Buddha, Allah, Brahma, Vishnu, Shiva, trees, mushrooms, and Isadora Duncan. Super fun. I think you had a really good grasp of the character, Lori. I think that you played her really naturally. Some stuff was kind of, I don't want to say thrown away, not in a bad way, but very natural in your delivery with what it is. You might have maybe taken some more time with it, like in between the thoughts, maybe to see you having the thoughts about these things so they're not just coming out as if you already knew what was gonna come out of your mouth. But it was a really good delivery. It was great. I, clearly you were very connected to the character. You knew what you were saying. You had your ideas and choices about, you know, how you felt about things. If, if I were to direct it and you were to do it again, it would be to take a little more time and think the thoughts as they're happening. But it was really well done and connected and I, I look forward to seeing what you bring to the table next. Jillian Conco, next, sorry, I have you guys like all written down here. So Jillian. I've always known I would marry rich. Why should I be ashamed of that? You know, I believe we have some power over who we love. It's not something that just happens to a person. I'm not a poet. I'm just a woman. Really lovely and great choice. Great choice of monologue. Your conviction was right there. You, you knew what you were talking about and you were very driven by exactly the motivations you're supposed to be driven by. I felt that. From a technical aspect, and again, this is technical, this isn't specific to your acting, even though it is kind of a frenetic moment, and I know your shot was like a three-quarter situation, the movement back and forth in the frame, although appropriate to the character, gets distracting for the watcher. If we were filming this, the camera would move with you. But as you're doing this in and out of frame, it doesn't elicit, I think, what you're trying to convey. Something tighter, 
maybe next time for something like that. But I felt like your conviction was very good. I also appreciated that you did it in your own voice, that you didn't try to, you know, overdo it with a British accent. Anytime you're bringing yourself to it, it always offers something better, I believe. The only other technical thing I would say, there was also like, there was a, like a reverb in your um, recording space too, so that can, can get a little distracting. But great job, really good. I, I look forward to seeing more of your work as well. Jared Lucier, who is our top pick this week for all of the voting. But he was a good man. And he loved us. All I wanted to do today was to give him a dignified send off. Is that really so much to ask? Did a great job. I thought this was a really strong choice, especially getting to know Jared a tiny bit. And he said he normally plays comedy. I think it's great that you took a risk and did something more serious and were able to show that side of you. I think that's that's fantastic. You also had a really good, as I said before, a good usage of your eye line and the space. You were really specific with where you were looking. That gives us as an audience the sense of exactly who you're talking to. That was really clear. You had a really good idea about who your father was and the connection that you had to him and what you were trying to convey. It was also really well uh, spoken and projected. I know you're a theater guy, as, as we all are, but you know, having just come out of a theater department, that that's your bag, and it was really clear, your diction was really well um, articulated, and uh, I appreciate that. So I look forward to seeing more of what you do. Clearly, this is just one little thing in your bag, so I'm excited to see what else comes out. Jesse Schaefer. As far as I'm concerned, they're just doing their jobs. <laughs> she was okay. She wasn't anything special. This was kind of a fun monologue. I, again, when I was given these, I wasn't given the slate, so I actually don't know what this is from, uh, but it was, a, it was a cool choice. And also something that as so many of us actors have been waiters at some point is a little controversial <laughs> to talk about tipping, but good call. Appreciate it. I felt like you, you know, you knew who you were talking to and, and how you needed to convince that person, you know, that this was wrong. I think I would have taken a little more time with it in the same way that I, I commented on Lori's of, of just taking some time to let yourself have the thoughts a little more, especially when it switches to you talking about like, oh, this is the violin or, or just having those moments of like, okay, yeah, I'll sign this thing. Letting those thoughts actually happen a little more clearly because sometimes I think we just we can power through and things can feel a little more like they're on one note and making those distinctions will take us on a journey as, as an audience. Even if the monologue is not going on a, a journey, it will allow us to do that. Which also brings me to the fact that I feel like I have learned by watching these top 12 too, the things that land well for me or that I yearn for are journeys inside of monologues. And that's just about choice. That's not about the actors specifically. It's about what you guys are picking. And I get it. Some of these are really specific. You're doing work that's already been written and it's just written as a, a small moment. But I think the smarter choice for picking monologues, especially for an audition like this, where it's a standalone thing, it's not a part of a play you're all auditioning for at the same time, is to take us on a journey so we can see um, where you go. We can just see how you deal with each emotion as it comes in. But great work, again, continue, continue. I wanna see, take your time with what you're doing, have those thoughts, uh, but really clearly very good work. You're, you made it into the top 12, so excellent. Claire Kind. Oh, okay, I see. You think this has nothing to do with you? You go to your closet and select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater, for instance, because you're trying to tell the world that you take yourself too seriously to care about what you put on your back. This was a lovely audition to watch. Claire has, you, Claire, have such a beautiful accent, and there's a melody to your voice which kind of offered this this lovely rhythm to the Devil Wears Prada monologue. It was lovely. There was a, there was a calm to it. There was a um, control in the same way that that character has control. Beautifully shot. I would say, however, I feel like 
again, as I was saying with some of the other things, I wish it had had a little more levels to it to some degree where we maybe didn't trust you so much to just kind of lay it out there on, on the line, that maybe there was an element of danger to her that would keep us more intrigued. If I were to go further with it, I would say to find extra moments of either cattiness or disregard or, you know, to find different levels inside of this speech um, that it's not just, you know, explaining how it all came, but to find these extra little moments that make it um, surprise us. You're extremely castable, like this is something clearly you could play. Yeah, and I would love to see what's outside of your wheelhouse and something, if you continue to audition to see, what, you know, what other awesome levels you bring. Um, but it was beautiful, it was beautiful, it was one of my favorite ones, so thank you. Next is Sabrina Heim. So I appreciate the struggle that you have been through. And I'm very sorry to have caused you pain, believe me, it was unconsciously done. But I'm sure the feelings of which you've told me have hindered your regard will help you in overcoming it. Though I might as well inquire, why was so evident a design to insult me? You've chosen to tell me that you liked me against your better judgment. Very good, Sabrina. I can see um, that you're working your tail off on these auditions. Good job. Again, you had, you had fantastic conviction with this. You knew who you were talking to, what you were talking about, what was going on there. Um, your motivation was extremely clear. I would recommend, and I love how you're, you know, experimenting with things and, you know, working with accents. I think that's great. I saw a another one from a week before with like a, a New York accent, a Brooklyn accent. Great job. I think I would love to see this audition again with no British accent, because I think we can get hung up on that a little bit. And sometimes it can get in the way of not just a, an audience, but as a performer, you just start to, you can get in your head more about the um, accent instead of the actual words that are coming out. So I would love to see this again with you just doing it as you and embodying it as you. I know we're trying to take on these characters, but the truth will always come out so much more if you start from just kind of where you are. What is exciting is when you bring your own uh, stuff to it. So I would have loved to have heard it in your own accent. Take some more time with some of those moments. Let thoughts come to you. Um, sometimes it's easy to just motor through things, but I felt like you had tremendous conviction and the energy of, of the monologue was right there. I would have just loved to have heard you do it in a way that was more, more you because you're you know, roughly the same age, I think, as the character, and I, I think that would have been really, really cool to, to see. So, excellent job. Again, I look forward to seeing more work of yours. Okay, Nick Friedson deserves gigantic mentions here. Quite an experience to live in fear. That's what it is to be a slave. I think this audition absolutely took the biggest risks and was the most inventive as far as how he shot it. Really, really cool choice. I will give super high marks every time for somebody who goes out of their comfort zone and, and takes a risk. I also noticed that last week Nick did uh, a Smeagol we're like really spot on Smeagol. So that was really fantastic. I am extremely impressed. Nick, you were also, you were in like my top three and I was extremely torn when trying to figure out who um, I wanted to choose. So this was a fantastic, ballsy choice. Awesome. And uh, intense, like you let yourself go there. And this is a, from what I remember of this Blade Runner character, he's a robot from what I understand, right? Who has kind of just seen the end of, of days and that's intense. Um, I was also curious, did you make that water super cold so that you were like shaking and shivering in there in the shower? Fascinated to, to learn your response. Again, I would have loved for this to have gone someplace else because it was kind of just here. For the next things, hopefully there'll be some layers and some you know, peaks and valleys that we can go on with you. Keep on keeping on, man. Good, 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 good job. And I feel like you've got big things ahead of you too, so keep on doing it. That's,
You're right there. You're right there. Keep going. All right, and now Kelsey Cole. I, uh, I'm sorry I got drunk at your funeral. I'm sorry I lost Groucho. I'm sorry I'm a shitty dog sitter. Kelsey, really good delivery and connection with what you were talking about with the other character you were you were talking to in the same vein as some of the other people as i've mentioned i feel like i wanted the monologue to go uh someplace else too to not just see kind of this one just this one emotion but you were clearly very connected and you had a lot of conviction so i would have loved to have seen where else it could have gone but you know really well done really well focused i thought it was shot well you know we could hear and see you and and you were framed really well so uh on the next one i would love to see where else you can go and what else you can bring and how do we stay um intrigued by you know what you're bringing on but good work good solid solid work so just keep on going keep on going show it show us what else you can bring to the table uh, that's what i have for the top 12 i think everybody did a really great job there were a lot of fantastic people this week great work great work uh, and I'm here to chat with whomever if you, you want to discuss things more. Okay? Good job, guys.